guys, my name is Jen Bort from Jen Bort. What are you doing? And today I will be showing you how to make homemade gyro. Mmm, and it is delicious. Come on, let's get started. With making the gyros, you will need the following ingredients three pounds of ground lamb. A medium sized onion I like purple onion and you will also need five cloves of garlic um, I've already smashed mine down you will need your seasonings which I have already combined and that is oregano basil cumin sage salt and pepper go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 degrees what I'm gonna do now in my skillet, I'm gonna drizzle a little olive oil in there. This stage is completely optional. I prefer to do this, which is saute my garlic as well as my onion a little bit. Um, I do this so that it pulls out more of the season. I mean, more of the more of the taste of the garlic and the onion, and it also grants you the opportunity um, to cook it a little bit thoroughly before you do it. But as much as I like to cook them two together. Um, I'm cooking them separately only because I have to blend up them both. The onion has a tendency to blend faster than the garlic, which means you'll have chunks of garlic left. So we're going to saute our garlic first, and then we'll blend it up in my little Nutribullet. Almost to the point where you puree it, and then we'll add the onion to it, and we'll just combine those two together. Once we've got that complete blend, we're going to add it to our ground lamb. But for the time being, let's just cook this. Now that my garlic have basically, it's like almost roasted. See that? That's what I want. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to add this. I'm going to add it to my little cup. If you don't have one of these little um, Nutribullets, you can use something, and then I'm going to go ahead and put my onion in here while this is cooking. But if you do not have a Nutribullet, you can definitely use something um, such as a blender, a food processor, anything that you have that will dice it up. And if you don't have that either, shoot, just use a knife. You know, it, 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 has, it doesn't have to be exact. I'm, not, I'm covering this up solely so you can see me dice up the garlic. Okay, so it's only going to be a second. I'm not trying to, even if the onion sweat this time. Yeah, that is sounds good on it. Ooh. Okay, we're just going to stir it around. Alright. So now I'm going to put my Nutribullet up here. No particular setting. I just wanted to put a little chop up. about to the point I want it. Listen, the garlic is small, so you have to shake stuff up sometime and you have to work it back down. Alright, so let's get through it out and stir those up a little bit. And this is how your garlic is going to look. See it's all over the place, which is fine. It's totally fine. He consists of salt already. We're going to add just a pinch of salt to this. Not too much. I don't know how y'all blood pressure looking, but my blood pressure, my blood pressure be so high. Ever since I had my baby sweat. All right, so look at this. Oh, that looks so good. People are, oh, no, that's burnt. No, baby. That's charred, baby. That's what it's called, charred. So we're going to cut our stove off. And then we're going to add our onion to the garlic. Baby, cooking is not hard. It's all in what you make it. And, you know, you just have to take your time, be patient. And most of all, it's a feeling. The reason I enjoy cooking soul food because I cook for my soul. I cook based off how I feel. If I don't feel like cooking, I'd be like, look, y'all go in there and keep something up. Um, a sandwich or something. Or something I didn't already, you know, leftovers. But cooking is so therapeutic for me. That's why I do it. That's why I enjoy doing it. That's why I enjoy sharing recipes because you have a lot of people out there who aren't able to cook or can't really grasp the concept of cooking. And it's a science and 
chemistry in my major, baby, but I can show combine two ingredients and make something happen. You may see a little smoke, too. All right, so I'm going to shake it up a little bit. They kind of mix the garlic and the onion together. I'm going to put it back on my Nutribullet. This is not a paid advertisement for Nutribullet. I'm just trying to show y'all what I use. All right, so we're going to blend this. All right, so in this um, mixing bowl, I have all three pounds of my ground lamb. Now what I'm going to do is add my onion and garlic mixture to it. All right, so we're just going to add that. I'm so excited to share this recipe with you all. Let me tell you, being pregnant with Amelia, I promise you, those folks I know were stayed in business because of me. And I just got tired of giving out my coins, child. And I'm the type of person that, hey, I would rather make it myself, number one, than to go to a restaurant. I hate going to restaurants. I'm a big girl, which is obvious. And I love my curves. That's not here, no there. But I'm the type of person that I prefer to cook my own food. When you go to restaurants, it's just too many hands that are over food. Too many people breathing over it. Um, and it just bothers me mentally. So, yeah, I do better cooking my own food. And then I don't know how long that food be sitting there either. We're also going to add our dry ingredients, which have already been combined. Um, you can do this at your own time. You do not have to go ahead and pre-combine your ingredients. I prefer to do this, and that way I stir them up. That's how I know it's being distributed evenly. So we'll just pour that in there in no particular way. All right, so what we're going to do is hook this up to our mixer. All right, so now we're going to just stir it. We want to stir it until it's almost like um, parade all together. Almost like potty meat. Listen, don't be saying ill because I grew up, I did not grow up in a home where finances were at a minimum. I grew up in a home where you ate what we had and you enjoyed it. End of discussion. I like potty meat and I used to like buying you know, us. Now as an adult, I don't care nothing about it. But as a child, I loved it with some saltine crackers. My mama used to eat them with golden flake potato chips, but I like them with crackers. Okay, but anyway, back to the point. Let's blend this. You may get to a point where you see where your meat has made its way to the top. Just push it down. Just stop it. Push it down. No issue whatsoever. And continue to blend. And also, you may have to speed, you can speed it up even faster to make sure your meat is parade um, even more. You almost want it like, remember, the consistency of potted meat. At this point, my meat is not the way that I want it to be. Even though the ingredients have combined through there, if you can see, it's still not to the consistency that I want it. So I'm going to continue to blend it. Okay, so now that my meat is to the consistency that I want it, <clears throat> see how easy that comes off or came off? Um, it's about the consistency of pie to meat. And the white chunks you see is not garlic, that's actually fat, um, which we definitely need that in our meat that is to keep it from drying up. <clears throat> I'll tell you more about that later. So now what we're going to do is transfer the meat out of our cooking bowl into a loaf pan. Now, I'm using a Pyrex loaf, loaf pan. Um, you can use whatever you have if you don't have a Pyrex loaf pan. If you can find something with the same shape or similar, that's fine. If not, use what you have. You're going to take the meat. You're going to take your meat off your blade. And then once you do that, hold on. Let's take this off first. All right. So, in the, in the midst of prepping your meat, um... You can mold your meat into a loaf. I prefer to use a loaf pan due to the fact that you're gonna have, once you're done cooking it, you're gonna have to let it cool. And then once it's done cooling, you're gonna have to let it chill so that fat can solidify around the meat. If you mold your meat and let's say just put it in a pan, that fat is not gonna solidify around the meat and your meat can end up dry. And we all know, don't nobody want no dry meat, honey. Don't nobody want no dry meat, honey. All right, so we're just taking 
the lamb off of the cooking utensil just like this you can see all the fat build up which is grease which is a good thing you need all of it but I'm not gonna sit here and try to pick all of it off I'm the type of person if I want cooking something I want all of it whatever I paid for give it to me appreciate you okay so now it comes out really easy too y'all let me show you first all right, so this is our meat and it will overflow the loaf pan just a little bit but once you actually start cooking it it's going to shrink all of that grease and all that fat in here is going to shrink um and it's just gonna hug around the meat inside the meat so you see that you just go ahead and pre-mold it a little bit and then just put it in your molding put it in your loaf pan Look at that. You see how I clean that camera? Okay. So now, what we're going to do is just work it through here. You can use your hands if you want. You can use a, um, a spoon. The reason I prefer to use my hand, because a lot of times you're going to have air bubbles that get trapped inside of here, which you won't know until after you actually cut your loaf, after you cut your gyro, which is fine. You know, it's not going to make or break it. It'll still taste the same. But I just try to do this to work some of those air bubbles out. So now I'm going to let this cook for 45 minutes. Um, 45 to 50 minutes. Even if it do not cook all the way through, which chances are it will. Even if it do not, <clears throat> it's fine. Because you still got a pan sear in your skillet at the end. So go ahead and cook it for 45 minutes. You do not want to dry it out. So you don't want to cook it too long. All right, so now that my gyro is ready, I'm going to take it out of the oven. It smells so delicious, y'all. All right, let's see. Oh my goodness, this baby looks so beautiful. Look at this, y'all. Look at this. Do you see this? Do you see this? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna allow it to cool for an hour and a half to two hours, and then once it cools, we're gonna put it in the refrigerator, and I'll be back. That my gyro meat has cooled down I'm going to let it chill so I'm going to wrap it up first I'm going to apply parchment paper or wax paper on the top I'm using parchment paper and then I'm going to use aluminum foil the reason I use the parchment paper over the aluminum foil I mean under the aluminum foil is because sometimes salt can cause aluminum foil to break down and to prevent that process I uh, put the parchment paper on top so now i'm going to put this in the refrigerator for about four to six hours now that our euro is done i'm going to show you how i like to warm it up and prepare it as you can see all of the fat around it has solidified and it is hard you hear that yes i just plugged the meat okay so first we're going to start off by getting it out of the um loaf pan you just take your knife and run it smoothly all around. This is all lamb fat. So run it smoothly around. And if you use beef, you have beef fat. All right. Because I do not like to put meat on my chopping board, I'm going to get a plate. I do tend on getting a glass chopping board pretty soon. Um, but it's not an emergency per se. So we're just going to... Pull it out of our loaf pan like this. Look at that, y'all. And you will have a gel on it. See all of that? You can cut that off. And just sit it to the side because you will use it again. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to slice our gyro. It doesn't really matter how big or how small you slice it, but you're going to slice it straight down in pieces and the best thing about this is if you decide you do not want to eat it all you do not have to eat it all you can go ahead and slice it up and freeze it and then once you are ready to eat it guess what only thing you have to do is take it out the freezer um put it in the skillet and warm it up but this is how it looks all of that goodness look at that
Doesn't that look delicious? All right, and I'm just going to do a few slices for you all. I do the rest off camera. Look at that. All of that goodness. All right. All right, so now that my skillet has heated up, I have it between medium high heat. I'm going to take the fat from the gyro, it's natural fat, and I'm going to place it in the skillet to melt. Got a little piece of meat in there. You can use olive oil if you'd rather not use the fat. You can use butter, whichever you prefer. But I like to use the fat because it is saturated with flavor from the meat. And just let that melt down. And then coat your entire skillet because you do not want your meat to um, stick to your skillet. And when you hear it start to settle, that's when you know it's good to add your meat. All right, now that it has started sizzling, I'm going to go ahead and add it. And y'all, it smells so good. You can see pieces of the purple onion in it. You can leave it whole if you would like to, or you can cut it in half. Horizontal or diagonal, completely your preference. There is no right or wrong way. If you want to cut it in three, you most definitely can. Like this. And the reason I try to go ahead and cut my meat now while it's in the skillet is so that all of my ends can get crispy. I love crispy ends. Um, could be just a southern thing. I do not know. But, hey, I like what I like. And crispy ends are definitely one of them. Cook meat. I want to start browning on one side, that's when I flip them over. Alright, so it has a little crisp to it, so I'm going to flip it over to the other side. Alright, so this meat is almost done. I'm going to show you how it looks. Doesn't it look delicious? The skillet is hot. i put it down. Alright, so while I'm going to continue to let that cook and then I'll be right back with you with the finished product. Now that our gyro meat is all done, look at that. Doesn't that look delicious? We're going to plate it. So first we're going to start off with our homemade tzatziki sauce. I'm just going to add a little bit of tzatziki sauce to it. All right, and then I'm going to add the meat. You can add as much meat as you want. No, you know, it's yours. Hey, you know, so don't be stingy. Don't be selfish. And then what I like to do is add just a little bit more tzatziki sauce. And some people are like, ooh, she like the sauce. I do. <laughs> I do. Thank you. And then I'm going to add tomatoes. I'm going to add cucumber. Just a few. I'm going to add onion. Purple onion. I love purple onion. Purple onion, I like the best onion. And then a little lettuce. Just like that. Just a few. All right, and then, of course, I'm not just going to let this bad baby not have a little bit more tzatziki sauce. I'm going to add a little bit more. It's falling. That's fine. It's about to fall in my throat in a minute. So it'll work out all the same. And this is how you have... Your hero sandwich. Oh, look at that. Everything is so eager to leave. Doesn't that look delicious?